I think if one more king came into this hole, the river would overflow. I kid you not, I stepped out of the truck to do the intro for this video, and as I started talking to the camera, I saw about 12 to 20 chrome kings blow right past me right up river here. They were absolute bullets, and they were pure chrome. Guys, I am so excited for this adventure. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode. This week, I have another awesome adventure to take you guys along with me on. I am headed out for a two to three day float trip here, and this is a remote stretch of river. Once I launch this boat and push off, I have no way to extra this boat out of the river for the next at least 15 miles I'm really glad you guys are along here with me if you enjoy this video make sure to go down below hit that thumbs up button and also subscribe if you're new now let's go see what this adventure has in store Well, I haven't even made it down the river three bends and I've already had to get out and drag the boat twice. The water is really low right now. I don't think I've ever floated this stretch and not have to at least portage several times. So there is definitely gonna be some interesting portages. So the goal this afternoon, guys, is just to get started on our float trip, find some fish and set up camp for the night. The time we're really gonna wanna focus, oh, there's a big fish right there. I'm gonna put the camera up. I don't know if you can see that go by me, but. A big fish just went by me. I'd say a 20 to 25 pound salmon, and that was a good looking fish. It was really fresh for sure. But the goal this afternoon, guys, is just to get our foot in the door with our float trip, get down the river a little ways, and try to find a couple big groups of fish. Once we find those fish, then we're gonna set up our camp, we're gonna fish hard tonight, fish really hard all day tomorrow, and then go from there. But this afternoon is gonna be our recon mission. It wasn't long into the float before I found a couple holes that had a very good amount of fish in them. I couldn't help but to pull over and throw some thunder sticks for a little bit and see if I could get a couple of these fish to go. Okay, so we found our first hole with a good amount of fish in it. I floated over this hole and there were probably, if I had to guess, 25 to 50 kings in there. They were shooting all over the place. So I oared past it a little ways, I pulled off on the side of the river, and now I'm gonna go sneak back up here through the bushes and try to sneak attack them. These two holes were looking really promising, but I wanted to get down river farther before I set up camp so I could at least knock out several miles of the float and I'd be in a better position for tomorrow. But I was really hoping that leaving these fish wouldn't come back to haunt me. What an amazing start to our trip, guys. Check out that thunder stick, baby. He just absolutely crushed that thunder stick. And check out that big Adipos fin too. Just a nice wild fish, guys. We're gonna get these hooks out and we're gonna get him right back in the water here and let him continue his journey back up river. Oh, look at this eagle right behind me, guys. Huge bald eagle just flew right over my head. Well, I am definitely going against my rule of thumb of never leave fish to find fish, but we have to make it down river at least a few more miles tonight before we set up camp. So hopefully, if all goes well, we'll find another pot of fish, we'll be able to set up camp, pick on them a little bit tonight, and we'll hit them hard first thing tomorrow morning. I didn't find any more pods of kings throughout the rest of the evening floating down river. It was getting late, so I just picked a random hole that looked like it would be a good place to start on day two. What do you 
when I say we are camping deep into the river bottom, I mean it. Guys, I am really kicking myself in the butt for passing over that spot back there where we saw all those fish. There was a nice place to camp and there was a lot of fish there. I mean, I just knew that I had to get down river, but right now I'm second guessing myself. I'm wondering if I made the right decision because I lost a lot of fish. But I came past a hole back up on the bend here and I didn't want to go by those fish too. So I'm choosing the option of camping deep into the cedar swamp. This is a really, really swampy spot. It's just so thick guys and I can already tell the bugs are going to be unbelievable they're already getting me I had to put my rain jacket on but you know what this is the price we got to pay for leaving fish to find fish <laughs> I can only imagine how many insects are going to be crawling on the tent tonight I'm going to try to find some sort of a flat place to set up camp gosh I just that is just not a good option guys I think this is going to be our best bet this little open spot right here this is a nice big healthy tree so we don't have to worry about the tree getting to us but there's at least some sort of a little flat space here because all this is incredibly thick and it's all full of picker bushes but at least here I'll be able to dig a little fire pit I'll be able to get my tent up and we also don't have any big dead trees over our heads so that's good I just went for the most refreshing swim. I was so sweaty and so dirty, but I got camp set up and a fire going. Now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna get a steak on over the fire, have some dinner and get to sleep. I'm gonna hit it bright and early in the morning. Hopefully these fish stick around, but this water is so warm guys. And these fish are definitely just blasting right now. I'm a long ways up from Lake Michigan and I'm seeing some really chrome bright fish. So that just tells me these fish are on the move. Hopefully they'll hold up in this hole and we'll be able to hit some in the morning, but I'm gonna go get a steak on, get some dinner and get to sleep because we have some work to do tomorrow. Well, good morning and welcome back. We are up and at it bright and early this morning. It was a fairly interesting night last night to say the least. I heard animal noises all night long, squealing, howling, rustling around in the bushes. The forest definitely wasn't very welcoming of my presence last night here. And then I woke up at about 6 a.m. to the sound of thunder, so I got camp packed up quick. I got my rain jacket on, I came and sat in the boat and I've been seeing some fish shooting up river. I've seen probably five or six shoot up on this sand flat here up to the next hole, but, but that's good. I've seen some really nice bright looking fish coming up river so I'm very hopeful hopefully some will have stopped in this hole here and we'll be able to pick on a few first thing this morning Well, I got three lures in the log on the other side of the river, so I think that's an omen. It might be time to go to a bobber. Fish, fish, guys. Oh my gosh. Fish, fish. I thought it was the back of the hole. I thought it was the back of the hole. Oh my gosh. I thought it was the back of the hole, guys. I'm trying to walk her down past the hole. Gosh, this thing is just going crazy. I'm going to try to walk her down past the hole so I don't spook the hole. The water's really low and clear right now, so we want to try to be as stealthy as possible. Gosh, this fish is just whooping my butt, guys. Oh my goodness. The chase is on, guys. There is nothing quite like the adrenaline rush of chasing down a fresh king salmon in the morning with a little rain coming down. Whew, got my blood pumping, I tell you what. He is so feisty. 
This is just the typical fall salmon fishing setting. Got a little rain coming down. We got an early morning skein biter. Let's see if we can beach them right here, guys. Oh man, nice buck it looks like. How cool is that? And now that I now that I see where this fish bit, I think I did have a couple other bites too that I thought were the back of the hole. But it turns out we might have some fish in the hole, guys. Oh. These fish are just so scrappy, man. Got him, guys. We got him. Early morning skein biter, guys. That is a nice, light colored buck. He's a really fresh fish still. Just starting to turn a little bit tan, but just a really nice looking fish. And once he's got his fins, like now, that's perfect release. And there he goes, back into the hole. You know, one tip that I wanted to share with you guys that I think will help you be a little more successful some days is to make sure you're being aware when you're fishing your hole first thing in the morning. Like this morning, I started off throwing spinners and thunder sticks, but I could tell they weren't reacting and they weren't biting those baits, and it was actually spooking fish up out of this hole. I could tell that little extra commotion of that lure casting into the hole and pulling across the hole was spooking fish up and out of this hole. And early in the year like this, when the water's warm, these fish already have the mentality of just go, go, go right now. You know, they want to get up river to where where the coldest water is and the most oxygen so if you bump fish out of your hole first thing in the morning there's a good chance those fish are just going to blow up five to ten miles even that morning so if you keep throwing those hardware baits and you can tell that the fish aren't reacting to them but you're seeing fish blasting up river it might be best just to back off of them and just hit them with a stealthy float fishing rig oh we got fish right here guys look at this look at this right by the boat i don't know if you can see that one right there there's a big hen right there going back up into the hole. That's actually a really woody area, but I can see four or five fish right where my rod tip's pointing. Oh my God. Oh, dude, that's gotta be a king, dude. That's, I bet you. That was a pretty hard thump. That was a pretty hard thump. I don't know if it's a trout. It is a trout. Oh my God. This little terrorist. This guy was terrorizing me. I thought I was getting a savage king bite. This guy's oh, big, one, big one. Same spot as the first fish. Same spot as the first fish. I kept getting by by trout in the top of the hole. I gotta get down on her, baby. <laughs> oh my gosh, this thing is just ripping. This thing is ripping! Oh my god! This thing is a hot ass! <laughs> oh my goodness! This thing is hot ass, guys! Just thrashing! Oh my goodness, he's trying to get me in the wood. Oh my goodness! Gosh! He was trying to get me in that big tree out there, guys. I'm back down to camp again. This is a good looking fish. Really clean looking fish. And it is not done yet. Gosh, this unbelievable power. Guys, it's whooping my butt down there again. It's going right back to where I just turned it out of. And I can't stop him. Huge paddle. Oh, it's getting up by the wood, guys. It's getting up by the wood. I can see it's around wood right now. Oh my gosh. We gotta swim for her. I can see she's... Oh wait, no, it's, it's weeds, it's weeds. Still not good though. The fish... It's tucked up under these weeds, guys. Look at this fish. It buried itself in the weeds. This fish completely buried itself in the weeds. I'm gonna see if I can grab his tail. Got him, I got him. Whoa, wow, look how clean that fish is. The fish is so grown. Oh my goodness, we got him, guys, we got him, baby. He is still not done yet. Wow, unbelievable. That fish totally tore me up downriver. I don't know how he stayed out of all the structure and logs too, but somehow he did and somehow we got him in. We're gonna get him going right back, but just a really healthy fish. Number two, baby, number two. We got two nice bucks in the bank, guys. Both of those fish just totally tore me up. I don't know how they stayed out of all the logs. You could tell at the end there, that fish just buried herself right in those weeds. It just goes to show you how smart these fish are and how aware they are of their surroundings. I think I'm gonna get retied and see if I can catch another one. I'll probably fish here for a little bit longer. Although there's fish here, I do gotta start heading down river. So I think I'll fish these a little longer, see if I can nail another one or two, and we'll start heading down river more.
Oh, it's a king! It's a king! It's a king! Oh my gosh! It's a king! I thought it was a drow! I thought it was a drow, guys! <laughs> no way! I was watching the bobber just bob and bob and bob the whole way down, and I didn't even barely set on it! That's where I kept getting terrorized by a trout! <laughs> In the rodeo weekends! I could not believe that, guys! Oh, it's a big buck! <laughs> This is the biggest fish I've looked yet. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Didn't even have to leave the hole for this one, guys. Didn't even have to leave the hole. Oh, and he's gone. Oh. <laughs> I kid you not. I thought that was 100% a trout. That bobber was just bouncing and bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. And I just gave it a little hook set. I didn't even give it a hook set. I just pulled back on it and fish was there, but. He popped off, but that's okay. We already got one nice fish to show you guys. We were gonna release him anyway, so we got a good fight out of him, and that's all that matters. So how cool is that? Maybe there's more uh, kings in here than I think. Maybe they're just being really finicky. These fish are on the move, guys. I've been pulled off just reorganizing all the camera gear and the boat, and I've seen at least a dozen fish shoot up past me in the last 20 minutes here. I would love to stay in that hole and just keep working it all day because fish are just filing through right now. And a lot of times, that's the best thing to do when fish are moving like this, just get in one good spot that you're hitting fish and just keep working it out but unfortunately we have a long ways to go so we're going to keep knocking out this float what well, just a beautiful morning out here guys this is a great start to the day i'm going to fly the drone a little bit and we're going to start heading down river and find our next fish After having some good success in the first hole of the day, it set the bar really high as far as fishing goes for the rest of the trip. The first several miles below that hole consisted of a good amount of fish moving up through the river, but after that I floated several hours without even seeing a single fish, and I began to get pretty worried that I'd already floated through the section of river that had a good amount of fresh kings moving upstream. I floated downriver for at least two hours and didn't see any fish and then I just came into this hole here. It's not even a hole, it's just a little dark cut along the bushes and I saw a lot of fish rolling around in there. So I backed up off the oars, I let them calm down now for about a half hour or so. Now I'm going to go run some floats through there and see if we can stick them. It is about to be on. There he is, there he is, there he is. I am just on a standoff with this fish in between the, me and this log. Oh my god. Oh. He broke off. He broke off. He broke off. He broke off. That bobber just absolutely drained. It got bobbed the whole way through there. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh my gosh. Tragedy strikes. After floating for quite some time and not seeing any fish at all, I was beginning to get a bit worried that I may have to cut this trip short and push through the rest of my float. So I was really relieved to find this hole and hit a few fish out of it. But come to find out, it was only the tip of the iceberg and I was in the right place at the right time. The next several holes downstream of here were absolutely loaded with fresh king salmon and I was able to have one of the best days on the water that I've had in quite some time. There he is. There he is. Gosh. 
Wow. That is so much power. Oh my gosh. Gotta turn him, guys. Gotta turn him. Oh man. What an insane battle, guys. What an insane battle. Unbelievable. These males are so cool and so unique. We're gonna get him right back. Just another nice wild fish. Oh, there you go, buddy. Back into the hole you go. What an epic battle, guys. What an epic battle. This is insane. Oh my god. What a fish. What a fish, guys. We're gonna get him. <laughs> well, I am completely worn out. I've been fighting fish solid for the last two hours straight. I'm just so thankful that this worked out and we were able to find some fish. One thing that I did pattern with them guys is these fish are just all in transition lanes. These fish are just potted up in traveling lanes. So they're not even sitting in the big deep holes mostly. They're just bunkered down in the little dark cuts and they're moving back and forth. So I just keep moving down as these pig pods of fish keep coming up. <laughs> This is one of the few days of the year that you hit it like this. It's so cool to be able to see the whole run of fish come through and that's exactly what we're seeing today. There's just huge pods of fish coming through. It's definitely a very cool thing and I'm just very glad it worked out. There he is, there he is. <laughs> Guys, I cannot stop this fish. Too big. It was too big. It was too big. I couldn't do anything with it. I could not do anything with it. It was too big. It was too big. It was too, too big. I fished the entire rest of the day all the way till I couldn't see my float anymore and it made for a very interesting time setting up camp. Without making a fire this time, I pitched my tent on the side of the river and got to sleep because I was really excited to hit it first thing in the morning. I called up my buddy Jarrett and we were planning a drop in point where he could meet me first thing in the morning and we'd float the rest of the day together. Well, we are up and at it early this morning, guys. I actually called my buddy Jarrett to come down and float with me today. I heard some huge pods of fish coming up last night, so it should be a pretty darn good day. I'm really excited. The woods are crawling. The, wo <laughs> the woods are crawling. <laughs> I got stuck in some serious prickers, bro. No way. <laughs> I mean, I was all clumped up, like mangled like a noodle in these pricker bushes. Probably got 50 holes in my waders. I think if one more king came into this hole, the river would overflow. <laughs> there he is. Oh my God, giving it to him. Big fish. <laughs> you let him eat it 
for about 15 minutes. <laughs> that bobber, that bobber was so under. It was gone. <laughs> Beaked her. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Dang, dude. That fish kicked my butt, guys. That fish tore me up. Dude, thank you, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Look at that thing. Jeez. Snooted. Snooted. Damn. After having just another amazing morning on the water, I decided to put my rod down and just dedicate some time to the camera to see if I could get some cool bobber downs and some awesome footage to share with you guys. <clears throat> oh, step it. Get oh. Oh no! It's a big mummy. Bobby Boucher! Damn! about my rod tip. <laughs> Got him, bro. Got him, bro. Beautiful fish. Oh, he's so mean, dude. <laughs> Chicks were savage. Oh, I think I just had a bob. Oh, yep, there he is. Yep, you called it. Man, he sniffed it out hard that first time. Well guys, we've just been picking away at fish. We haven't found any big pods of fish that we've been able to hit. We've just been moving and hitting fish in all these different little slots. Anywhere where there's some shade, there's been some active fish that have been biting for us. This is a big gnarly buck. Oh, he's bleeding out, dude. Look at this. Oh my God, he wow. swallowed it, dude. We're gonna have to keep him. Gosh. Swallowed it. I think you like that skein. <laughs> you said, I think I got a boom. <laughs> Just a thick, gnarly buck, guys. He swallowed that skein hook. He's actually, he actually started bleeding out when I was fighting him. He just swallowed those eggs, so we're probably gonna have to keep this fish. We don't wanna throw them back and for him not to make it. So just another nice fish though. Just big healthy bucks, man. These fish have just huge shoulders on them and they just go on crazy runs. Just gone, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely devoured. Look at this. Absolutely devoured. <laughs> I think he wanted it. Although we had a great day and brought some beautiful fish to the boat, we definitely didn't clobber them like I did the day before. It was apparent that the big run of fish continued to move upstream, and today we were just hitting the very tail end of those big pushes of fish. This just goes to show you how hit or miss this style of fishing can be and how you need to be in the right place at the right time. You can be the most knowledgeable and experienced angler out there, but at the end of the day, you still need a little bit of luck on your side. Well guys, that officially puts an end to our 48 hour float trip. That was an epic adventure and I'm really glad it worked out and we were able to find some fish. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to go down below here and hit that thumbs up button and also subscribe to our channel if you're new. We'll see you guys back here next week in our next video.